welcome everyone to Today in the Scene. I'm Joe with Indie Arcade Wave, and this week we're going to have some guests back on that we had a while ago um, who created an awesome indie game, and that's going to be the team from Creaky Lantern Games. So they made the game Street Cleaner, the video game, which comes from Jesse being the artist of Street Cleaner and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'll let them tell you about. Uh, but first, I want to introduce Jesse here, who's not ready. How are you doing, Jesse? I'm uh, good. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Good. And then this is Brooks. He's the developer behind the game. Hello. So I'm bringing you guys back on just to kind of chat about everything. You've had some updates since the last time we spoke. Um, before we jump into everything, I just want to say, if you like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, whether you're on YouTube or the podcast. And we did recently launch a Patreon. Um, if you'd become a Patreon to help us uh, improve the stream and bring on more guests, it means a lot to us. And I mean, we got a couple of Patreons and we were already upgraded to more video software. So the podcast looks way better now. Um, to the Creaky Lantern guys behind Street Cleaner the game. Um, I want you guys to just kind of introduce yourselves. Um, I know we've already done an episode. And if you didn't see that, I'm going to throw the link up in this corner over here. Um, so you can check out the other episode. But just introduce yourself and kind of let the listeners know who you are and what you're about. I'm going to let Brooks go first. All right. So... I was the, the lead programmer, artist, designer, basically everything but the music on the game. And uh, my name's Jesse, and I uh, I uh, perform, I write music and perform as Street Cleaner. And um, I did the music, and uh, I, I like to think I, I had my fingers in a little bit of everything, uh, but I never never touched any line of code at all whatsoever yeah i can definitely relate to that i've i've been there pretty much the whole time with galactic battleground but no code no art i'm i'm just there to help make the game what it is yeah, um, everyone's important so everyone yeah everybody's got their piece that they add to the puzzle and that's that's how the final product comes out yeah it would it wouldn't be a thing if it weren't everybody working together right yeah so, um, like I said, we've already done an episode kind of talking about the game and like some little intricacies within it, but give us a recap of Street Cleaner the game, how you guys kind of came together and how you guys made the game. Um, so, uh, I worked uh, on a game that Brooks made in 20, 2012 or 2013 called Eternum, and uh, I did the soundtrack for that. Um, that was uh, pre- Pre street cleaner, um, but uh, uh, working on that was my first experience ever writing music uh, for a video games. So that was a, a really neat um, project, or, or you know, you know, the first big thing into a, a actually writing for a video game. But uh, uh, I, I had uh, Brooks had helped me out a lot getting this project started called Street Cleaner, where he and I both kind of shared similar visions of basically. Uh, I'd be writing the soundtrack to a movie that doesn't exist, um, but like a, a movie that that was, you know, in universe came out in the 1980s, you know, and and you know the whole vigilante revenge films were really popular back then, and so um, it was just a, a project we did. Brooks uh, facilitated pretty much the entire visual aspect of the project, um, even you know uh, a music video we did early on and stuff, and and I was doing the music side of things and. And we were kind of like a, a yin, and yang, yin and yang of, of uh, talents and interest where together we were able to uh, accomplish a lot of stuff. And um, so, you know, uh, Brooks is, is always working. Brooks is always has a bunch of different, you know, concepts and ideas going on, you know. And so I, I like, uh, you know, I've always been there to try, try to, you know, facilitate the audio end of, of what he's been working on. Um, and uh, eventually, you know, he'd come up with a like a, a little animatic screensaver type animation thing like a little uh, uh pixel art thing uh to basically make a, a faux video game based off of like what would a game look like that was based off of the movie that came out in 1988 you know like if like you know because you know in 1988 like or, you know, in the 80s, like, every freaking big movie got a game, uh, and and they weren't always uh, on model, I guess. And so, you know, because obviously they couldn't all be, you know, uh, Batman is, you know, 
a lot more blue in the video game than he is uh, in the movies because they had to make him blue so he didn't blend into the background, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, uh, we, you know, so we just kind of like threw that back and forth about what a street cleaner game would look like over the years. And uh, eventually, uh, you know, Brooks said, hey, let's just do it. Let's let's get this, you know, let's work on this. And and uh, he had a lot of really good ideas and a lot of really good uh, just overall concepts on on how it should be from a, a, a design standpoint. And uh, I was all about it, you know, and so together just working back and forth again, you know, like the yin and yang of, of complementary skill sets, uh, we were able to uh, to get Street Cleaner, the video game out. Um, yeah. Yeah, because we because we shared we shared our love of of retro 8-bit games, the NES and specifically and you know, the, the big ones, of course, Ninja Gaiden, Castlevania, that kind of thing. And. But we also felt that even though we wanted to call back to those old types of games, we wanted to update them with more kind of modern feel and and design aspects to it to bring it to modern day so that it looked and it felt and it brought you back to the 80s so that you would think about its roots and its ties to movies in the 80s, but also be something that's just eminently playable now like a lot of 80s games aren't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, 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 and it was important for us. I think we spent a lot more time, a lot of time trying to decide on what aspects exactly we wanted to, you know, use from more current games. You know, uh, obviously like uh, checkpoints and stuff like that, um, you know, and, and there's lots of things that it'd be, take a long time to go over exactly everything that we had done. That's more of a, a, a thing that's developed more so in the last 25 years, you know, but at the same time, you know, keeping color palettes and, and stuff like that were important and, you know, not having sprite scaling, you know, which is more of a nineties thing. Uh, you know, we decided against that um, sprite rotation, you know, uh, I, I think, I think we cheated a little bit, on a couple parts with sprite rotation, but not where it counts, you know, not, not where it'd be even be noticeable. Um, yeah, we kind, you know. kind of outlined what you could do on an NES on hardware and figured out from there, which rules we wanted to keep and which ones we wanted to break. Yeah. So obviously mm -hmm. like aspect ratio, um, you know, like that, but at the same time, you know, our player sprite is going to be Castlevania height. you know, and, yeah, and it's literally Mega Man high. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> even though the, even yeah. though the, the the proportions are different. Yeah, he's one bill and one lance high. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I love kind of what you guys did with the game and the way it looks and everything. And the last time we spoke was, I believe the episode went live the day your game also went live. So uh, what was it like to finally launch the game? I know we had a pretty extensive conversation last time about the advice you'd give to indie devs and that being get it done like yeah. ship the product don't work on it over and over and over and try and go so far with it like work on the bare bones make something that functions that you like and then get it sent so what was it like to finally launch that game yeah launch day is always the most nerve-wracking thing uh, i think for me especially because i'm the one that if something's broken i have to fix it like that's that's not jesse's domain that's all <laughs> me so I'm a nervous wreck when it goes live. Uh, and my, my job on launch day is to make sure as many people know about it, <laughs> that it's out there, you know, and, and, and to get it seen. Cause I mean, we could, we could, we could deliver a diamond, but if nobody knows it's there, then, you know, what good does it do? You know? Yeah. I always say that's kind of like the biggest problem from up and coming artists in, I think any field, music, video games, whatever is you can make good stuff and people will like it. Whatever you make, people are going to like it. The hard part is finding the people that will like it and getting them to know that it just exists. Yeah, I mean, just just getting that that reach is is everything. It's, it's so hard. Everything is flooded every single day. There's so many things going on, on social media. And especially with indie games, when you look at Steam, I mean, you're looking at hundreds of releases every day. How do you how do you stand out in that crowd? Um, so since you guys have launched, um, I'm sure the game has done well and you guys have, um, had some people playing it, some people reviewing it. 
things like that. What new things have you brought to the game to keep the content fresh and or, I mean, like, I know that there was something about uh, like a hidden character that you guys threw in there. Tell me more about stuff like that. Well, so we um, actually, yeah. Wanted, so leading up to the launch of the game, we actually did a Kickstarter, but we didn't do the Kickstarter for the game itself. We, we were upfront about it when we did it and we started it. We said, this Kickstarter is not for launching the game. The game is coming out no matter what. So what we did is we did a Kickstarter for physical stuff only. So that was, you know, for, for, game discs for audio CDs for the soundtrack. And also we figured out we wanted to do a real retro guidebook that harkens back to the old Nintendo power days, which looked uh, awesome by the way. Yeah. So it was the, but the Kickstarter was, we figured best, best, like a, a worst case would be as if we broke even on, on launching this Kickstarter as far as, you know, like, the money that came in and what we produced. I, I think the way that we had set it up was that if, if we, we were going to, if we didn't reach whatever goals or whatever, you know, um, we were good, just going to eat it, you know, like that was, that was a risk that we were willing to to take, um, you know, and, and, you know, if we got, if we got to, you know, our, our minimum or whatever, uh, that still wouldn't, we, we would come out on the negative underneath, you know, um, but, uh, yeah, that's not how it ended. Yeah. We positioned it mostly as, as promotion, like, because Kickstarter as a platform is something that people know. So we said, okay, we're going to do this so that people will see this thing that they know. And we're getting an avenue of promotion through that. Yeah. So, and and so. when you're promoting, a game, it was also, I, I also, it had a lot to do with, with announcing the game and stuff, but when you're, when you're promoting, you can only harp on one thing so much you know you can only tell your 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 audience you know the people that are are interested you can only show them the same thing so many times so by doing a kickstarter um you know we were able to incorporate new things like adding a soundtrack adding a player guide and doing that kind of thing and and you know kind of uh being able to make the game uh more of a success yeah so so in the kickstarter we had exactly one stretch goal because like we said, the game's coming out. We're, we're just doing this for physical stuff. If you want physical stuff, this is how you get it. But our one stretch goal was if we hit that goal, then we would add a secondary skin. And that skin was the original character model that I had made for the little demo thing, you know, years previous for the, the little test video that I was making. So we actually hit that goal. So that's where the skin originally came from. And then... We ended up kind of using the skin, the, the fact that it was in the game or that it would be in the game as a means to sneak in extra content and ways to further engagement in the game. Yeah, I think I think that, you know, there we, we had downtime because, you know, when, when you submit everything, you have you have some downtime and and leading up to the time where the game was was done, you know, uh, and to where the time the game was published. We were we were so caught up in the momentum of being really productive at the time. Uh, Brooks, you know, you, you can't just stop, you know. And so uh, Brooks had had continued to come up with a, a few uh, different things. Not only, you know, um, we we have another skin as well that that's hidden in the game. And as far as I know, no one else, no one has found it yet. Um, and uh, you I know, remember I remember you guys I, teasing that, like on the maybe it was on like. Was it on your Discord that you guys kind of had a little video of like that? But I don't, I don't remember ever seeing where to find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I know. I don't think anyone's found it yet. Um, you know, uh, but uh, at least I, think, I, I think Rift did it. find it. Rift did what? find it. Rift did find it. Oh, he did really. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, I I didn't know about that. So that's found. And then um, you know, and and I created additional music. I had been um, I had been wrapping up working on a full length street cleaner album uh that. Yeah, I wasn't telling anybody about because I didn't want to detract from the street cleaner, the video game thing, you know, and, and I can't stress enough that th this game took over two years to make, you know, so it wasn't like I, I, I'm, you know, it wasn't like it was just an album, you know, kind of thing. It was it was a much, much larger project. And in the meantime, I was working on a, a another album. Um, and so, like, I we were able to 
kind of sneak a song from the album into the game and that's hidden in there. Uh, there's other little things here and there, little, little, just little, little uh, flourishes and, and things thrown into the game to find that don't necessarily have any um, bearing on it. But uh, I, Brooks and I are big fans of um, the whole, <clears throat> one of the greatest nostalgia things that, that I like that, that kids can't have today. And I say kids, because when I was a kid, you heard of a lot of stuff on the playground. You went to school and you heard about the Konami code, or at the time we called it the Contra code, you know? And and that was mind blowing. Or or you heard about, uh, oh, if you duck on the white block at the end of stage three, you can go through it. And then you have to run all the way to the end of Mario three and that, that kind of thing. Like you heard about this stuff, you know, uh, on the playground and or at school from other kids and stuff. And it got to the point where like, just word of mouth, you know, was was one of the the raddest things, and and honestly, that can't exist anymore because of the internet, obviously, um, because information so instantaneously accessible, and so you know, Brooks and I, you know, reminiscing one day, we're like, it'd be kind of neat to throw that kind of stuff into the game, to where it doesn't change anything, you're not going to lose anything if you don't see it, you know, and if you do see or hear something, you know. It's not going to be like world changing, um, but it's neat to have little extra bonus flourishes and stuff in there for when people do hear about it, they can tell other people about it and, and they can tell other people and that kind of thing. So it's something that really doesn't happen that often in video games anymore. And yeah. Yeah, there's there's one code in the game that there's no way to find it in the game. <laughs> so we kind of decided on a criteria that if we saw like streamers or whatever, meet the criteria we would secretly tell them the code and say okay you've got the code now it's up to you if you want to keep it to yourself or spread the word yeah and as, as far as i know i don't think anyone who 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 heard the, who has the code has shared it <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's always <laughs> cool to to sneak little things in like that like we did it with galactic battleground um and people haven't really found that yet either. So um, that's always fun. But I'm curious about the Switch release. That's kind of why I brought you guys on here is we already know that the Switch release is live. You guys just released just a couple of days ago, right? Yesterday. 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 So that would be Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so what was that like to go from Steam to Twitch? Um, I guess you can get as technical as you want to get with it. Um, but how is that different from releasing on steam the the platforms i think are kind of similar in like their back ends like they they've both got a lot of tools for developers and and releasing uh, the the big thing i think is like getting on nintendo hardware has like been i, I know like our goal like as people <laughs> as gamers for a long time right that's just something like you know you, you always Growing up, you go, wow, I'd love to make a game and get it on a Nintendo, right? Uh, so we, we together decided, OK, we're, we're pushing for this. We're going to do it. So when we started working on the game, I actually put a lot of work up front into doing research into technologies and software stacks and stuff that would allow us to do it on both platforms. And luckily, I found a pretty, I think, a pretty robust solution for that it was it wasn't too bad i mean you've got a lot of options you, you your big platforms like godot engine and unreal and unity those all have out of the box solutions uh but street cleaner was actually it's pretty much handcrafted like there, it doesn't use an engine it's everything i wrote but because i'd done the research i was able to port it to the switch uh we didn't have it it took us a while to actually get switch access so like you, it, even though it was our goal, we still had to figure out processes and you know pitch them and get permission. And that's a black box. You just kind of have to to poke them and hope that what they they see they like what they see when you pitch. And we we got lucky for whatever reason, and they liked what they saw and let us in. And it was actually once once I got a dev kit, it took me like a day to get the game running on it. Everything else was all the, the putting all that work up. in. Yeah, you you put all that work in, in you know all those months leading up to it. You know, so when it came time, it's just like, yeah, you had it. 
I think that's that's how you announced it to me. <laughs> it's, yeah. Oh no! What what happened? <laughs> so you actually, yeah, you you came over because we were talking about some other stuff, and I said, yeah, you, you keep talking. You say what you're saying. I'm going to play on my switch, and you like looked at me with this look of disgust, like, what are you doing? We're we're talking here, and you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I already was, had it ready to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was uh, one of those one of those days. You have a few of those days in your life where you're just like, <sighs> you know, and uh, that was definitely <laughs> one of those days. Yeah, uh, we 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 early on, like day one, we we you know came up with our ideas of of you know what what we wanted, and and you know, and things change over time. But the one thing that didn't change, and I gotta say, I think this was Brooks and I always had our number one thing that we wanted to accomplish was get this on switch and and you know certain things came and went ideas came and went i know the soundtrack had had started one way and then you know we ended up going in a different direction with it and and other aspects too um but that was one thing that didn't change we we from day one always wanted this game to be on switch the game is made for for switch you know and and the gameplay itself everything about it is is what really, you know, the type of games that should be on the eShop and Switch, you know? Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel that. The game does have, I mean, like you said, it has such a Nintendo vibe and it's inspired by so many Nintendo classics that you, I mean, it can't not be on Nintendo. Like, it, it's got to end up there someday, somehow. Um, the, the hardest part of development was knowing for months that it, we, were do, we, we were actually doing it. It was coming out and not being able to say anything in spite, of, in spite of all the people going, you know, when they see the game, the, the first thing they ask is, is this on switch. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like the cocky ones. Like, yeah, talk to me when it's on switch. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's okay. when you know your game has made it. How, how long did you guys know that you were going to go on switch before you announced it? Cause you probably, I mean, I didn't hear anything about it until it was live. Like it was on switch since late last year. That whole time, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we've known about six months. Yeah, <laughs> it could have been sooner, but this is my first time navigating Nintendo's processes, so it could have been faster. But I just, I just had to feel through everything and get it done. Also, also, you know, mental health days. You know, that's that's really, really, really important. I know I myself. There were multiple times where I just had to to kind of like. I'm going to take a day off or I'm going to take, you know, a week off or something like that, you know? And, and there's a thing that, that it's really neat that Brooks and I get each other to the point where, where we're just like, it's more important that, that we stay sane and that our quality of life is important than it is to meet deadlines. So by not announcing the game, we don't have a deadline. We don't have a, a date that we have to hit. We don't have any promises. We're going to release it when it's ready. And we're gonna we're gonna stay happy people. <laughs> we're gonna stay sane people, and we can, you know, do that. And 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 I, I don't know. That's that's really important to me. And and you know, ultimately, you know, uh, um, if if the stars align just right, and and this is you know our our primary profession through life, then then it's definitely that's a, an aspect that I would like to keep. You know. Also helps with promotion when you just <laughs> when just something's ready it. to go. Yeah, when you just there it is, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we kind yeah. of have this we kind of have this theory that you know, if you're big, it's good to announce stuff and then build hype. But if you're not so big, it doesn't work so well. <laughs> it only gets you so far. We've found more success with just finishing things and dropping them and then the hype is around the drop and Yeah. People see yeah, it's out. If they see it's out, they'll just get it right then. Yeah. Don't need to wait. Yeah. Yeah, because then they're not they're not on your back about when's it gonna be ready, when's it gonna be ready. You're just like, <laughs> it's done. Go get it now. You're you're just finding out about this, but it's done. Yeah. And it's got a lunch sale. Get it now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I had a guy hit me up yesterday. He says, uh, hey man, the game looks sick. When's it gonna come out on PC? <laughs> <laughs> it's been out on PC for a long time now. I just, you know, yeah, I just I just replied with a link to uh to the Steam page. <laughs> there you go. When's it coming? It's it's out, man. Go grab it right yeah. now. Um, I guess that's kind of what I wanted to talk about with Street Cleaner the game. And if you guys have anything else you want to add, like feel free. But 
I kind of want to know what you've been working on individually. I know Jesse, you dropped a new album, which you said you were kind of keeping quiet that whole time. Um, are you working on anything else, Brooks? I'm I'm working on tech for the next thing. We've got a couple different. I mean, I've always got projects. I've got so many projects. <laughs> That's the way it is as an indie dev. Right. You get into it because you have ideas and you want to get them out, right? But we've got a couple, I think, top contenders. Uh, so I'm working on tech, right? Like a update to my engine that will kind of handle whatever we do next. Yeah. U ultimately, I, I think you know, um, it is you know the this this is just you know this is just you know step two. You know, releasing this game is just step two on on what our ambitions are and what we want to accomplish and. And, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm still doing the street cleaner thing full time as a as a job. Um, and uh, so I've, I've got that going. But um, ultimately, I would love to just just do games. You know, if, if I could do that, you know, that would be uh, that'd be a dream come true. Um, but I'm, I'm always, you know, writing music and stuff. I, I released like like you said, I released an album. Um, what did I do it? A, a I forgot when I released it two months ago. That sounds and, about right. Yeah. And uh, it, ex it exploded. Um, it's got to be my biggest release to date. And, and that's really, was really hard to comprehend um, because I did no promotion for it. I, I did the same thing that we did with the switch release. It was just like, and here it is, you know? And uh, that's I exactly what I thought. I, I just remember I was on, on YouTube. I just pulled up YouTube and it was like right there on my recommended. I was like, is this a new <laughs> album? A new, like, what is this? Yeah, it, it was something that I'd been working on, you know, on and off for quite a while. And and uh, having having a main project like Street Cleaner, the video game is really freeing in other ways, too, that I if I have an idea, you know, that isn't going to work out for the game or something like that. OK, quick, jot that down. I can come back to that later and, and maybe that'll work its way onto an album or something. Uh, and, and in this case, yeah, there's there's bleed over. For for street cleaning of the video game and the album Edge, there's 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 bleed over. If you listen to it and you pay attention, you'll see that they they kind of although they're drastically different, you'll you'll see that they share a lot as well. Um, mm -hmm. it, and and then yeah, but I'm always I'm always working on stuff. I've got uh, I've I've been I've been teasing about something uh, for this Monday. We'll see what happens. The game is also I think kind of a, a has some clues that no one's picked up on for I think what the next album is going to be too <laughs> yeah <laughs> just sliding some things in there real quiet um, oh yeah, yeah it, it's it's one of those things synergy. where synergy. When, yeah, synergy when the next album comes out when whenever that is um people will will they'll do one of those like ah oh, okay he told right. us about this years ago yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see whatever you guys put out in the next, I mean, year or whatever it is here. Um, Brooks, I know we've talked a little bit about some of these projects, um, and I like that you stuck to the way you are and you aren't going to tell anything. It's when it's ready, it's ready. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see all of it. So um, I guess that's kind of everything I had. So to wrap it up, just throw out social media links so that people can find you guys and obviously can check out the new Switch release. It's so everything I think is important is creakylander.com. That'll get you games. That'll get you social profiles. Uh, our Discord. We're active on our Discord, talking about games and just general tomfoolery. Yeah. So creaky lantern, uh, creaky lantern games.com, creaky lantern.com. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Every everything uh, is is linked from there. You, uh, that's a good good hub for anybody who's interested like in uh, what we got going on. And join our Discord. We're really active there. We like talking to people. <laughs> gotcha. Well, I'm going to throw all the links to everything down in the description. Um, I'll throw in some extra ones, too, just so that people can check you guys out, check your work out. Um, and to anybody that likes what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I just want to say thank you to everyone that's been watching. Um, we've had a big boom in subscribers and views lately, and it means the world to us to see that people are finally catching on to this and are helping promote it. Um, but until next week, peace.